So let's now talk about bringing it back to prostate cancer, a paper that you and I discussed probably on your first uh, your your first uh, appearance on the on the drive, which was that paper that came out in the New England Journal of Medicine back when we were residents. God, so this is I, I really think this was probably o two or o three, and it was a it was uh, at least for me not being a urologist, but but still being someone that kind of at least read the New England Journal of Medicine. Pretty pretty remarkable in in what it suggested, which was the lower a person's testosterone, the greater the risk of high grade. Uh, prostate cancer. Um, so, so maybe for folks who don't remember that discussion, can can you bring us back up to speed on that on that point and and the findings of that paper, which I think are starting to make sense, by the way, in light of what we're talking about. So the main driver that people have always focused on the um, the dependent kind of fuel for prostate cancer has always been post postulated to be testosterone, and. In a normal prostate cell, we talk about these different thresholds. Obviously, when uh, a, um, the gland undergoes mutations and prostate cancers develop, some of the wiring is, is, is skewed and you can develop a cancer. Now, um, the initial uh, study basically showed a correlation between grade and aggressiveness of prostate cancer with, um, with testosterone and, and, and and PSA values, showing a lower PSA was associated with a higher grade prostate tumor. And that concept was something that always intrigued me. And, and I think during the time we did our first podcast, which is in 2018 or, or so, I had been working on this, on, on again, studying that exact same concept and understanding, well, if a higher grade prostate cancer is a cancer that is um, less similar to a, a benign prostatic gland, it's more dissimilar, it's more um, altered. What are the factors that are associated with, you know, causing it to grow and causing it to be aggressive? And so we really did a very deep study to try to characterize, not based on PSA values and grade, but actually on a much more comprehensive assessment of the engagement of the androgen receptor with the ARE and the prostate cancer cell and the output of that engagement within a tumor. And so we developed a signature, an androgen uh, receptor act activity signature that basically looked at the, the endpoint of androgen receptor activity within, an, within a prostate cancer. And we found similar observations and similar findings. That is, the more aggressive a tumor was, the less it relied on or less output of a canonical AR engagement with its traditional receptors existed. And so that, again, underscores the observation that paper we talked about back in, in our first podcast. That is that cancers that are more aggressive are probably less reliant on the traditional growth and differentiation factors that a prostate epithelial cell has in its normal microenvironment. And these, these tumors are much more aggressive than kind of AR high tumors. These tumors rely on different growth mechanisms to be to be aggressive and they have different vulnerabilities in terms of sensitivity to agents that we may use when they present at, at later stages so yeah the initial observation was something that was always at, at front of my mind and we've done a, a lot of work in our lab to try to understand why those higher grade tumors um, are often found with lower psa values and potentially uh, and, and what the what the kind of reasoning is, and then what makes them what makes them look the way they are and act the way they do. So, so Ted, you you referred to these canonical genes. Um, I, I think you said there are nine of them that make up the ARA score. Well, yeah. So we there are hundreds of genes that have kind of canonical androgen responsive elements within them. We basically did a rank ordering and identified the top, you know, uh, 10 for reasons that are a little subtle. We took, we kicked one of them out, but there are several different, and there are, are many actually different kind of androgen responsive signatures. You can look at ones from benign cells. You can look at ones from early cancers and you can look at ones from advanced cancers. And the fundamental principle uh, that, uh, that there's this cohort of, of androgen responsive genes 
um, is pretty consistent. And if you look at them in at any of these different stages in the kind of benign, a benign cell signature, a localized prostate cancer signature, androgen response signature, or an, even an advanced disease, the same theme is true. That is the tumors that rely and have less of a, a, a signature that is less um, AR high like, they are more aggressive. So they think about it like I, I try to explain. But, sorry, I try Ted. To explain. Just, just to make sure I understand something from the standpoint of the of the of the tool, this is something that you're doing post biopsy and or post prostatectomy, where you're looking at the actual patient's genes and presumably you're finding mutated genes or uh, you're finding SNPs that are known to be higher risk of a given set of genes. Yeah, so this the analysis is based off of an AFI 1.0 ST chip uh, that basically looks at gene products, presumably after the engagement of the androgen receptor. Oh, oh, I see. So you're doing an assay on the tissue to look at either mRNA or That's something. Right. Yeah, okay, got it. It's an mRNA assay from a biopsy, so you can actually characterize tumors up front from a biopsy, or you can characterize tumors that have already been resected with surgery, or frankly, you could characterize a tumor from a metastatic location if you really wanted to. Got it. It's an, MR, an mRNA-based assay looking at gene expression, and the presumption is you could do a simple, you could actually just look at androgen receptor gene expression within the tumors, and we did, and you see a similar story. But when you, uh, as you know, when you just say, well, we're gonna take the, the nuclear hormone receptor and look at its 10 targets, you're gonna get an amplification of that particular signal. So we thought we would have a broader array of cases to look at, or a broader array of expression to look at if we, we developed a model that wasn't just a single gene. In our case, it was nine genes. Others have built ones that are 250 genes, 600 genes. We've tested them all. They all show the same and tell us the same story. So they tell us that they're within a, within a prostate cancer, agnostic of grade, agnostic of stage, there are tumors that have signatures that are consistent with high androgen receptor output. Those would be like, the way I explain to patients are, those are weeds in your garden that have just, they're really large above the surface, but have very thin, tiny roots. They're, they're very, they're very, um, they're very, uh, they're kind of differentiated, right? They're big and they're well differentiated, but they're not aggressive. And then there are tumors that have, you know, they, they don't look like a normal prostate gland at all. And they are have signatures that are, that reflect very low androgen receptor signaling. They have amplification of other signaling pathways, P10, uh, MYC, et cetera. And those, are associated with a much more aggressive phenotype in terms of metastasis, in terms of progression, in terms of resistance to traditional therapies that we use for individuals who have prostate cancer.